Hey there everyone, welcome to Technisha, where you can find tutorials on productivity tools. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and smash the bell icon to stay updated. Excel has always been used as a go-to tool for collecting data with multiple information. By default, Excel has a layout of rows and columns. For example, here is the sales data and the various information in this data are the region, the segment, unit price and quantity. Excel gives us an option to create a table from a data set. It is really simple to do. Just click anywhere within the data. Let's say we click in cell B5 and then on the home tab you will have an option as format as table. You can click on the arrow and select what style you like. Let's go with this one and then Excel automatically detects the data range and also asks you a question if your table has headers. In our case we do so you check mark the table as headers box and just say ok. There the table is now created. Along with it also the table menu is activated in the ribbon. So whenever you are outside the table there is no menu and when you click anywhere within the table the table menu gets activated. Each table when created is assigned a name by Excel which is mentioned here. So this table has been assigned the name table 2. You can change it so let's name it sales and just press enter. There are other options available in the table ribbon menu. Let's take a look at them. When you look at the section here this is mainly cosmetic uh, in the sense that you can uncheck banded rows and then you will not have the rows which are alternating colors. You can uncheck the header row which will not display the header row. In our case we want it. And then you can also do a first column which then bolts our first column and last column which again makes the data bold in the last column. Similarly you can also have banded columns where alternating columns are given different colors. So it's better to have either a banded columns or banded rows. Having both of them will make the view look very confusing. And then there is a filter button. The filter button gives inherent filtering capability to the table. So when we don't have it checked, there is no way we can select data within the table. But if we have the filter button checked, then the user can go and select which particular data set they want to see. And so let's say I select South, you can see only the Southern regions data and you can again click on the filter button and say clear filter to get all the data. Of these options, one of the most important options is the total row. When you check the total row, automatically at the end of the table, a total row is assigned where you can now select what type of quantity you want to total. The options we have for the total rows are average, count, count numbers, min, max, sum, standard deviation and variance. But since it's a text based field, the maximum we could do is do count. So this shows the number of rows for this selection. And let's say for unit price, I'm just going to pick some right now. So this gives us the sum of all the unit prices. Similarly, the quantity is now again a sum field which adds all the quantities in the column E. The advantage of this total row is that it's dynamic. It changes based on our filtered data. So now if I select region as let's say east, the total row has moved now again below the last row and now you have the counts updated as four entries where the unit price sum is adding these four entries and also the quantity is learned. This can be really useful for us to get quick data insights just by click of a button. Note that we can achieve the same phenomena using subtotal function on a normal data set. I have already done an extensive tutorial on that. Uh, you should see the link in the cards displayed now. However, if you use the table feature. It becomes really simple to implement 
some specific functions. It's also really simple to add new rows to the table data. Let's disable the total row for a minute. So now once you have the data with no total row, you can directly type in below the last row. Let's say I'm typing in not. And as I press enter, automatically the new data is added. I'm just going to, let's say, add television as, let's keep 10,000 and five pieces. Another way to add a row is get to the last column and the last row that is bottom right and hit tab. Automatically a new row is added, which you can now fill with data. Another way to add multiple rows simultaneously is to click on the bottom right corner, you have a blue placeholder and there it is. And then you click and drag below to simultaneously add multiple rows of data. So now that we've added two rows of data, I'm just going to add the total row again. Note that even with the total row, when you go to the bottom right corner of the data and hit tab, a new row will be added. Also, if I take the bottom right corner of this total row, again, the blue placeholder is there. If I click and drag it now, you see that I've added multiple rows of data and the total row has moved below the last row. It's also really simple to calculate using formulas in tables. Let's say that we wanted to add a new column called amount to this table. So let's go to cell F4 and type in the word amount. As you press enter, Excel knows that a whole column of data needs to be added. And now I go to cell F5 and the amount is going to be the unit price times the quantity. So all I need to do is say equal to unit price, click on cell D5 and you note here automatically, it's now not referred as D5, but as the header of that column, which is unit price multiplied by quantity and just press enter. Automatically, Excel calculates for the complete table based on the formula of unit price and quantity. And now in cell F23, which is our total cell, you can select a sum. We can update the formula in any row of the column and the total column will get updated. So let's say now that I'm going to add a 10% discount to all the amounts. So I'm going to the row 10, that's cell F10. In the formula, I update it as 0 0.9, which is 90% of the value, which essentially means a 10% discount. And when I press enter, you notice that the complete column has been updated. Though it's relatively easy to pick choose the region and segments to get the data for your needs, it's still a little time consuming. This is where tables has a really neat trick up its sleeve called slicers. So let's select anywhere within the table, go to the table ribbon menu and here you will have an option called insert slicer. I'm just going to click on it and just select region and segment as the two slices I want to look at my data and say okay. Slicers work wonders when you want to slice and dice your data. So you remember that if you wanted to see the east region now you need to go here to the header and click east which is let's say three clicks right now and fourth click outside to get to the data you can easily achieve this using the slices you note here that east has been selected now if i want to select north all i need to do is click north and the north data is available let's say i wanted to see the refrigerator in north i can click refrigerator and i get north and refrigerator if you want to select multiple options within the same slicer you can click control or command and click on the other option. Now you will have both microwave and refrigerator for north. And let's say if I want to do the same thing for south or west, it's really simple to now slice and dice my data. And if I want to reset the complete slicer, you can click the option here. Now let's say I click it here too. You'll have your full information. Tables can be really helpful in many situations. For example, if you have a data set which has multiple calculations and when you have to add a new row, if you use a table, you don't need to enter the formulas again because they are automatically copied over. Also, with the help of the slicers, you can easily slice and dice the data for quick analysis. I hope that this tutorial was of use to you. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel. Till next time, ciao.